Hey tea heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, does all green tea taste the same? In this video, I'm gonna be blind tasting five famous Chinese green teas to see if I can spot the difference. And then hopefully I'm gonna be giving you the knowledge so that you can distinguish between these classic Chinese green teas. If at any point in time you enjoy this video, then make sure you hit it with a like. And if you're not following us on all of our socials yet, go click those buttons. I know the tea heads amongst us are all screaming at the screen saying, of course, Don, not all green teas taste the same. I know that, you know that. But what about all the people that are just getting into loose leaf tea? For a lot of people, they don't know the differences between the different types of green tea. And so often when I speak to people about tea, they say, oh, I like tea. And I say, which tea? And they say, green tea. And I say, which type? And they go, green tea? Or even worse, they say, I don't like green tea. And I say, what have you tried? And they say, green tea. The fact is that if the packet of tea that you are buying just says green tea on it, throw it away. Essentially, that's like looking at a bottle of wine and it's saying white wine. It's not giving you any information about the terroir, it's not giving you any information about the type, the season, the cultivar, all of that information that you would expect so for example, a white wine might be a very buttery Chardonnay, or it might be a very mineral rich Chablis, or it might be a really gooseberry and fruit sweet sour Alsatian Riesling. You can't say that white wine all tastes the same and it's exactly the same with tea. In front of me, I have five green teas. They're all from China, so I've even narrowed it down. These are Chinese green teas, so we're not including Japanese teas, Korean teas, which taste even more different. We've selected five 2018 Chinese green teas. These are our 2018 Mayleaf green teas for this year. These five teas we've batch curated for 2018. As I said, these teas all come from China. China is a big country, as you can see, with a lot of tea being produced. But let's zoom in to the eastern side of China and focus in on the three main provinces that we're going to be talking about today, Zhejiang province, Anhui province and Jiangsu province. They're all next to each other and they all produce stellar green teas. So one of them is this one here. This is Naked Spring, also known as Kaihua Longding, a classic Zhejiang green tea. Next up, we have got Jade Sword. Jade Sword is another tea from Zhejiang province, from Anji area of Zhejiang province. Then we move into Jiangsu province. And this is Green Quill, also known as Bilochen. Next up, we've got probably the most famous Chinese green tea out there, Longjing, also known as Dragon Well, and this is our Imperial Green from Zhejiang province. And finally, a new tea, a new green tea to the Mayleaf roster. Please welcome Melon Seed Green, also known as Luan Gua Pian. So those are our five. What we're gonna do straight away is we're gonna brew all these up in fast motion, and then I'm gonna do a blind tasting to see if I can tell the difference. Let's go. So we've brewed them all around the same amount of time, about 30 to 40 seconds at 80 degree water. That's 175 Fahrenheit. We're using 3.5 grams of leaf. Now, some of these teas are better suited at different parameters, but we thought we would even it out. Now it's a question of whether or not I can taste the difference. This is Naked Spring. This is Jade Sword. This is Green Coil. This is Imperial Green, and this is Melon Seed Green. Can you do the honors? Celine is here, by the way. Hello. <laughs> so can you do the honors and blindfold me? That's fine. Yeah. Okay, so now you're going to roll a dice. Yeah. Make sure you don't give away anything. And I will hold the cup. Where's the cup? There. Yeah, okay. All right, I cannot see anything. Okay, so you roll the dice, show the camera the number. Okay, so it was, it, it was this one. Okay. Got it. First Tell me one. when it's ready. I'm putting it into your cup. Okay. Ready? Ready? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go with our new boy on the block, 
Luan Guapian, Melon Seed Green. Am I meant to say? No, no, you don't say anything. Don't say anything. Just uh, keep going. Keep going because otherwise there'll be a process of elimination. So I'm saying that that was Melon Seed Green. Okay, next one. Yeah. Go for it. Totally different. Mm. Much lighter in taste. Lighter as in, not lighter in terms of intensity, but lighter in terms of more of those bright aromatics. So the first one was more, a little bit more shortbready and biscuity. This one has a little bit more of the green and grass. I'm gonna say that that's a jade sword. Okay, I'm just gonna put them in order because I feel like I'm gonna forget. One second. Okay. Next one. Wow, I'm getting some good dicing here. So first one, melon seed, second one, jade sword. This is what I'm saying. Okay, Tell me one. when. Oh. Okay, ready. Ready? Yeah. Oh, wow. Nutty, nutty. I'm going for the classic Dragon Well Imperial Green. Okay, next one. Okay, next one. Ready. Mm. Super bright, super raw, super spring tasting. That has to be naked spring. And I'm getting that dryness and astringency. Ooh, lovely. A little bit of gooseberry on the finish. And then the last one? Last one, which theoretically, according to my calculations, should be green coil. Mm-hmm savory, much deeper. Mm, definitely got more of those umami notes to them. A little bit of the in-between. It's kind of an in-between. It's got the brightness, it's got some of the deeper notes, but it's got that savory kick that can only mean green coil. Okay, so can I take this off? Yes, you can. How did I do? You did so good. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so definitely Definitely, yes. So Got them right. Guapien. Yeah, Luan Guapien was Melon number one. Seed. Melon Seed. And then it was Jade Sword. Jade Sword. And then it was Imperial Green. Imperial Green. And then Naked Spring. Naked Spring. And then Green Coil. So there you go. 100%. I promise I didn't <laughs> cheat. I promise, promise, promise I didn't cheat. They are, there are worlds of difference between these teas. And as you saw on the map, they all come from relatively the same part of the world even relatively the same areas in China on that east coast. Mm. You can have a little taste. Right, so now what I want to do is to describe each one to you so that when you come face to face with these teas, you can spot the difference and you can impress all of your tea head friends. We'll be right back. <laughs> okay, let's quickly go through these teas one by one so that you can learn how to distinguish the flavors of these classic Chinese green teas. This is a Naked Spring, aka Kai Hua Long Ding. This batch was picked on the 25th of March 2018, so it's an early spring picking, pre Ching Ming. This is from the Ju Kung Zhong variety, and it comes from Kai Hua, Zhejiang, China. So it comes from Zhejiang province, a very famous province for green teas, but it's right at that intersection close to the borders of Anhui and Jiangxi province. You can see that the picking on this is mostly buds, predominantly buds, a few young leaves, but it is very, very bud heavy tea. And the elevation on it is 1,100 meters. Now, the flavor profile, the characteristic of Naked Spring is all about raw spring. It's sappy, it's bright, it's very, very verdant. It's got a certain astringency that comes from breaking sap, from breaking um, leaves and chewing on them. You know you get that dry uh, stringency that comes from rawness. That's why it's important that you brew it at relatively low temperature. I'm gonna have the second infusion here. So let me just brew this up. So this is 80 degree water. We're gonna brew it for about 20 seconds in this flute brewer here. The flute brewer is great because it gives you this ability to see the leaves bobbing up and down. Very, very nice, especially with these bud teas. You're gonna see a lot of vertical movement in there. I like brewing green teas in glass, not just because of looks, but also because glass 
because of its low heat retention, which means you're not gonna cook the tea. It's gonna allow the temperature to dissipate and that's gonna maintain some of those bright aromatics in the tea. Let's take this strainer out. Beautiful color, very, very light. Nice, nice color, citrine yellow color. Let's have another taste now that I'm no longer blindfolded. Cheers, everybody. I'm getting flowers, I'm getting jasmine, I'm getting, uh, imagine waking up um, if you're camping and you're going out fresh, fresh, early morning dew, that smell in the air, ionized air. You're getting some of the flowers. There's definitely a lot of floral notes in here compared to the 2017 version of Naked Spring. Very, very floral, but again, very, very bright, very, very sappy. It's got elements of star fruit. It's got elements of that fresh laundry smell. It's all about that clean, bright, raw taste. Lovely, lovely tea. So that's Naked Spring. Okay, next up we have Jade Sword, AKA Angie Bai Cha, another classic Chinese green tea. Again, I've done a video about this. So if you really wanna dive deep into Angie Bai Cha, then go check out that video. Let's quickly scope this tea. This tea is from the 25th of March, 2018. So around the same time as the picking for Naked Spring, again, pre Qingming. The cultivar on this is a white variety called Bai Ye Hao, Bai Ye Hao variety. The origin is Anji, Zhejiang province in China. So we're moving slightly north, but it is in Zhejiang province, same as Naked Spring. The picking on this is a bud and one or two leaves, and the elevation is slightly higher, 1,530 meters. We brew this slightly hotter. So this is 85 degrees. That's 185 Fahrenheit. Because it's a white leaf variety, which means it's paler than your average green tea variety, it can take hotter water and longer brewing times. Again, the flute brewer allows you to really see that ex extraction process in action. Okay, I think that that'll do for us. I just wanna give you guys a snapshot of the differences in these Chinese green tea flavors. Let's give it a taste. Cheers, everybody. Angie Bai Cha. Mm. Jade Sword, one of my favorite green teas. So Naked Spring was all raw spring, waking up in the meadows. With Jade Sword, you're getting a little bit more depth, a little bit more warmth. It's still in the meadows. You've still got those flowers. Those flowers are a little bit sweeter. We're also getting a little bit of fruit, but very light fruit like Asian pears, that very, very light, gentle fruitiness. But I'm also getting a slight milkiness, like a, a nut milkiness. So no, nothing dairy, nothing heavy, but just a light milkiness, which is coming in to the brew. Right, let's move on to the next one, which is Green Coil, a premium top end Chinese green tea. Very, very well known, but you've got to get a good grade. Again, I've done a full video about this. I'll put a link in the description below. Let's quickly scope this tea. This tea was picked on the 23rd of March. Again, very early spring picking, pre Qingming, 23rd of March, 2018. The variety is the Dong Ting Kun Ti variety. This comes from Dong Ting Mountain in Jiangsu province in China. So now we've skipped up to the neighboring province from Zhejiang, and this is grown right next to Taihu Lake. The picking on this, super fine. You can see very, very fine, very, very furry buds. It's a bud and one leaf, extremely fine picking, and the elevation is not so high on this one. It's 250 meters. Flavor profile on green coil, really depends on your quality. Make sure you get good quality green coil. This is one of those teas where there's lots out there and a lot of it is not very good at all. But generally, we're going even warmer. We're taking those vegetal notes and we're amplifying them. So now I'm expecting to get more vegetal notes and I'm also expecting 
to get a lot more umami or savoriness coming through. For those of you who love Japanese green teas, this is probably the closest Chinese green tea to a Japanese green tea flavor profile. It is different, of course, but it is probably the closest that we have. Cheers, everybody. I'm getting, I'm getting the taste of a wok fire. You know, this has been pan baked and you can just taste that it's not smoky at all, it's not burnt, but there's that wok fire taste to it. That heat is coming through. Once you get past that, you're getting vegetal notes. I'm getting cooked spinach. Yeah, lots of cooked spinach. I'm getting savoriness, but I'm also getting that protein umami savoriness that comes usually from <clears throat> meats or from seaweeds. It's that savory note which really sets this tea apart from the others. Really deep, really satisfying. It's got a nice, rich, satisfying finish that comes from very fine pickings that brings about a real texture in the mouth. Green coil. Again, delicious, but very, very different from the previous two. Moving on to the classic, the renowned, the one and only Dragon Well Green Tea. We call this one Imperial Green. We found a pretty mega batch of this one this year. Let's quickly scope this tea. This is from the 19th of March, super early picking, 19th of March, 2018. This is from the Longjing number 43 cultivar. It comes from Zhejiang province. We do not purchase our tea from Shihu, which is very famous for Longjing because we think for the price point, you can get so much better teas if you purchase outside of that famous area. So you can see that this comes from Xinjiang in Zhejiang province in China. This is a bud and one or two leaves and the elevation is 600 meters. Beautiful color, real nice yellow green hue on this tea. Let's brew it up, 80 degree water for this one. And with Longjing, what you're trying to achieve with Longjing is to maintain some of those fresh notes, but also to have some nuttiness. The classic flavor profile is chestnut, but that kind of green nuts, those are the, the, the flavor profiles that you're looking for. And of course, because this is pan baked as well, you're also gonna get that heat, the taste of the heat that comes from that pan baking. Let's give this a taste. This is fresh in, new batch of Longjing is always a delight. Always a delight every year when we receive, and this batch is a stunner. Cheers, everyone. Mmm, rich in nuttiness. Very, very light, very, very um, clean finish. The aftertaste has those juicy fruits in them. So you're getting the green, you're getting the freshly cut grass, you're getting those, uh, those juicier notes coming through at the finish, but at the start, I'm getting those toasty notes, hazelnuts, chestnuts, toasted wheat, definitely that, those toasty, nutty notes come through at the start, and then you're getting some savoriness, not as much as with green coil, but you're definitely getting some umami here as well and finishing with a nice, bright, clean, juicy finish. So that is the ever popular Longjing, AKA Dragon Well, AKA Imperial Green. Finally, let's move on to the new tea in the Mayleaf collection. Let me introduce you to Liu An Gua Pian, also known as Melon Seed green tea. Now I'm going to spend a little bit longer talking about this tea because this is new in stock and for many years, for 10 years, we have tasted Luan Guapien and we've never selected it. So this is the first time that we found a batch that we think is worthy of being called a May leaf tea. 
Luan Guapian, let's quickly scope this tea. This tea comes from the end of April 2018, so it's later picking than the others, but I'll explain the reason why very shortly. The cultivar on this is the Q Kung cultivar. This comes from Anhui province, so we're moving north, we're moving west to Anhui province, to the Luan area of Anhui province in China. The picking on this is very different from your average green tea. The pickings for green teas are usually very fine pickings, so buds and very young leaves. The younger the leaves, the more tender they are, the better in general for green teas. And if they have buds, even better. But with Liu and Guapian, it breaks all the rules. With Liu and Guapian, they are picking leaves only, and they are picking leaves which have had time to mature. So they're intentionally allowing the leaves to mature, which is the reason why it has a lot more of a dark color. If I compare it next to the Long Jing here, you can see a lot darker color in this one here. So they pick just the leaves. They don't pick any buds. They wait for the leaf to grow. They'll pick it without any stem. That's also very important, which is why you'll see in the wet leaves that it looks like the leaf has been ripped because they intentionally pick it without any stem. So they rip the leaf so that there's no stem in the finished tea. Very, very important because of the fact that they have to wait for the leaves to mature, this has to be picked late. You can't get high quality pre Qingming Lu An Guapian. So it's the absolute opposite of your other green teas where earlier pickings is best. If it's an early picking pre Qingming Lu An Guapian, I would suggest that's not a very good picking because you want the leaf to mature. Once they've picked the leaves, they leave the bud there and that bud will become another leaf later on, a couple of weeks later. And so that second picking is just as good, some say even better than the first picking. So again, a green tea to break all the rules because the second picking is as good, if not better than the first picking of the year. After they've picked the leaves, they put it through a withering process to develop some flavor. Then they'll bake the tea in three separate woks at different temperatures, starting with hot to, to have the kill green process to deactivate the enzymes in the leaf, and then cooler temperature to start to shape the leaves. Once they have uh, baked the leaves, they will then charcoal uh, dry the leaves. So they'll put it over a slow heat to charcoal dry the leaves. And then a very interesting step in Luan Guapian processing is called the pulling of the fire, where they flash roast the tea. This is a very arduous process. It basically involves them piling the leaves up in large bamboo baskets and then bringing them over to a very hot fire, very, very hot, and they just literally put it over the fire for a second and then take it off. Then they mix the tea leaves again and then they walk over to the fire. They put it on for a second, they take it off and they repeat this upwards of 60 times and they can increase the fire, the temperature of that fire. So you're getting intense heat flash roasting. That is a very skilled process. It can go all go horribly wrong and that is why for most of the time, whenever we're tasting Luan Guapian, we don't like the tea because it's overly smoked. It has that smoked taste where the dust has fallen into that fire and it has smoked the tea. So you're looking with Luan Guapian for a warm taste, a roasted taste. Definitely that flash roasting process is all about giving that extra dimension and heat, but you don't want a smoky taste at all. Right, let's brew this up. I like to brew this at 90 degrees because of the fact that this is larger leaves, you can go hotter. As the leaf matures, what happens is proteins develop in the leaf, more sugars develop in the leaf, you're getting more starchy notes in the leaf, you're getting it closer in a way to an oolong picking. And we all know how oolong has those sweeter notes to them. And so with Luan Guapian, we're looking for that sweeter note, that warmer note, that more roasted note too. Color on this is still very, very vibrant, but just it just looks a bit deeper in color, richer in color than the others. Cheers, everybody. Mm. 
So immediately I'm getting this real roasted note, but it's very different taste to the roasty, toasty note of the Dragonwell Long Jing Tea. Very, very different. That has more nuts and those toasted wheat notes. This is more like, it's more like kind of baked potato skin, dark baked potato skin. It's starchier, it's sweeter. But then the finish on this is all about that biscuity warmth. It's got kind of shortbread notes to it. It's also got some fruit, but the fruit is sweeter again. We're talking about things like strawberries. Strawberries, shortbread, strawberry shortcake is one of the tasting notes that I came up with when we tasted the samples and it definitely is in this batch. So you're getting that biscuity warmth, strawberry shortbread, but then the finish, you're getting that nice strawberry through the nose, but very, very quenching, nice minerality. Lovely, lovely finish, lovely, lovely journey, starting from that baked, roasted, flash roasted taste, moving on to that biscuity warmth and that strawberry finish. And you can see here that the leaves are much larger and they have no buds, no stems. You can see that they've been ripped at the edge. So it really looks like it is pure leaf and nothing else. And the color is very, very uniform on it. As I said, Luan Guapian, again, a tea which you can find everywhere, but make sure you don't get one which is smoked because that means they didn't do a very good job with their flash roasting or the pulling of the fire. Mm. Really, really satisfying, really, really warm, and again, very, very different from the other teas. So that's it. Those are your five classic Chinese green teas. They are the Mayleaf 2018 selection of green teas. They are all now in stock for you. So if you want to do this taste test yourself, you can. Of course, all of you tea heads already knew that no, not all green tea tastes the same, but I hope that this video has given you some clear pointers as to the main differences between each one so that you can pick up the one that suits you best. That's it, tea heads. If you made it to the end of this video, then make sure you hit it with a like. Follow us on all of our socials so that you don't miss out on the news and videos from Mayleaf HQ. If you're ever in London, then come visit us in Camden to say hi and taste our wares. If you have any questions, comments, or video ideas, then please fire them over. Other than that, I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.